Hello everyone, welcome to this detailed deep learning program. So in my first class, I have told you what is neuron and what is artificial neuron and we talked about, um, you know, artificial neuron, right? So if you'll see this image over here, here, so this is artificial neuron and it has two functions, summation and activation function. And if you remember in my previous class, I've told you like in my next class, we will be discussing about all the activation functions, right? So in my today's class, we will discuss what are the various activation functions and I'll tell you when to use which um, uh, activation function, all right? So this part, so what we are going to discuss today is means when these these inputs are getting summation these inputs get uh, added over here and the output of the summation function will become the input of activation function which activation function we should use over here to get more accuracy right so that is what we are going to discuss today so let's start so these are the different activation functions. So if you see here, we have a unit or binary activation function, sigmoid activation function, you can call it logistic uh, activation function also. After that, we have tanh activation function, ReLU activation function, softmax activation functions. So in my today's class, we are going to discuss about these activation functions. So when we study, you know, after a few classes, I'll tell you about other activation functions also. But these are the few activation functions which you should know at the beginning of this program. So today we are going to study about these activation functions. So the very first activation function is unit or binary activation function. So let's understand what this activation function does actually. So over here consider this example. So the function of s, x, remember this function of x me the function of s or function of x okay so what we are saying over here is if the value of x is less than theta then output should be zero and if the value of x is greater than theta then output should be one so what this theta over here so this theta is a threshold value over here I have written threshold value and randomly I have picked one number. Let's suppose I'm saying that the threshold value is 5. Threshold value over here I have chosen is 5. That means theta equals to 5. Okay. The value of theta is 5. Right. And what we are saying is if the value of x is less than five give the uh, why because uh, we have defined this we have assigned five to theta threshold value so if the value of x is less than five then output should be zero and if the value of x is greater than five then output should be one so let's see over here so, for example, just assume the value of x is 4 in first case, right? This 4 is f of x, that means f and the value of x is 4. This 4 is less than this threshold value, 5. That means output would be 0 because we have defined over here that if the value of x is less than theta, less than 5, then output should be 0, okay? And in second case, the value of x is 6, that means function of 6 is 1. Why? Because this 6 is greater than this threshold value. If the value of x is greater than 5, then output should be 1. So, this is what we are doing over here. Again, if the, when the value of x is 1, that means function of 1 will be 0. Why? Because 1 is less than our threshold value. And again, when the input value is 8, function of 8 is equal to output would be 1. Why? Because this 8 is greater than our threshold value. And finally, you can see that we are getting output in the form of 0 or 1 only. And how we are deciding whether the output would be 0 or 1 on the basis of this threshold value. This is what unit step or binary step activation function is. Okay, you can see in this graph also. 
if the value is less than 5 then output would be 0 but if the value of x is greater than 5 then the output would be 1 okay so this is what unit step or binary step activation function is so when to use this function so whenever you want to have output in the form of 0 and 1 then you can use uh, unit step or binary step activation function over here right so if you will use unit step activation function over here what will happen you will finally get the output in the form of 0 or 1 okay so this is one kind of activation function we have discussed and now let's talk about next activation function next activation function is sigmoid or logistic you can call it sigmoid or you can call it logistic so guys if you remember from your machine learning classes and machine learning we have logistic regression logistic regression right and in logistic regression when we study logistic regression we discussed sigmoid over here over there also so what this sigmoid is sigmoid simply means you will get output in the form of you will get this kind of curve s shape curve sigmoid okay and this lower point is 0 and the upper point is 1 okay so logistic and sigmoid is same you will get a s shape curve over here and this is the formula of sigmoid activation function 1 by 1 plus e raised to the power minus x and the value of e is 2.718 okay so let's suppose uh, see this chart over here table Let's suppose if the value of x is 1, that means 1 plus 1 plus the value of e is 2.718 raised to the power minus and the value of x. What is the value of x in a first case? 1. So, you will get this output when you will solve this formula by putting the value of x over here. Right? And in the same way, let's suppose if the value of x is 10, then what will happen? rest of the thing will remain same at e you will fill this value and minus x the value of x is 10 to fill 10 over here and when you'll solve you'll get this as a output so this is how these are the different values i have applied and shown you the result of each value by solving this formula this is a formula of solving a sigmoid okay now the uh, when to use sigmoid what kind of um, means in which situations you can use uh, sigmoid activation function so you can see over here whenever you want to map input values means whenever you want output in the range of 0 to 1 right range of 0 to 1 means any value lying between 0 to 1 if you want that kind of output then you can use sigmoid activation function right so if you remember in a unit step or binary step when to use this when you want only two possible output 0 or 1 right 0 or 1 when you want only two type of outputs then you use unit step and when you want output between output ranging between 0 to 1 then you can sigmoid then you can use sigmoid activation function and this is the curve of sigmoid activation function and these are the different values which you are getting as a output over here and again over here this is a threshold value right so that means if the uh, output value is greater than 0 0.5 it will uh, it, the output will be this and the, if the uh, uh, if the output value is less than this threshold value then it will become this right so what we are saying is input this sigmoid activation function can take input between minus infinity to plus infinity that simply means you can give any kind of any positive or any negative number to uh, this sigmoid activation function but it will give you output between 0 to 1 only. This is how sigmoid activation function works. Okay. 
Now let's talk about next activation function. Okay. So before moving to the next activation function, so I have just shared a small code like how you can create your uh, the sigmoid activation function, right? So what I'm using doing over here is import math. Math is a module, and then I'm creating my function. Df is used to create a function. And sigmoid, this is my function name. You can write any name over here. So, because I'm creating sigmoid activation function, so that's why I've written over here sigmoid. And then x, right? The value of x. And this is the formula. This function should return this uh, this particular thing. One divided by one plus math dot exp minus x. Remember the formula? This formula. This thing we are writing over here. Right. So we have created the function. Now you can call the function. So I'm calling this function. The function name is sigmoid. So that's why I've written sigmoid over here. And we have to give. We have to provide the value of x. So I'm providing the value of x. The value of x is one. So this is the value it is giving us. You can see 0.73. Over here you can see when the value of x is one. So 0.73 we are getting as a output. So now. We are again using that function sigmoid, but this time the input value is 10, and this is the uh, output which we are getting. So this is how we can use, we can create our own sigmoid function. All right. Now let's move to the next activation function, which is tan h activation function. See, tan h activation. Sometimes students get confused between tan h and sigmoid. And see, in tan h also, if you see the curve. Over here also we are getting S S shape curve only uh, like um, we have in our sigmoid, but the difference here is the range of tan h output range of tan h is minus one to plus one. Over here in sigmoid we are getting output ranging between zero to one means we are getting output in a positive range only. But when we talk about tan h So output can lie between minus one to plus one. This is the major difference between sigmoid and tan h. Sig uh, tan h. Let me show you over here. See this red one is sigmoid and green one is tan h. So you can see over here this sigmoid is a S shape curve, but it is in positive range only, right? Positive range only. Tan h is again a positive uh, this S shape curve, but The range lies between minus one to plus one. So this is the difference between sigmoid and tan h. And if you want to see the formula of tan h, so this is the formula of tan h. So over here two by one plus the value of e. I have already explained you in sigmoid that value you'll do uh, put over here minus two into the value of x. So when you'll solve and minus one again. So this is the formula. By applying this formula, you will get the output of tan h. So that simply means see now when to use sigmoid activation function and when to use tan h activation function. So if you want to deal, you want to you know have output in negative and positive values, then you can use uh, tan h. But let's suppose if you want to avoid negative values and you want output in positive range only, then you can use sigmoid activation function. All right. So this is what uh, uh, tan h and sigmoid is, guys. Rest. Don't worry. When we will in my next classes, when we will implement the you know code, then I'll tell you um, at that time only like why we are, why I'm using this particular activation function over there. Right. Right now in my today's class, just understand like these are the different activation functions and this is how they work and this kind of output every activation function. Gives us okay. So as I've just told you, sigmoid will give you a output uh, in a positive range between zero to one. Tan h will give you a output range between minus one to plus one. Unit step activation function will give you output in the form of zero or one, right? So this is how these activation function works. Now let's see which activation function is next. Relu, relu activation function. We are going to use this activation function lots of time because this activation function performs very well. Okay, so how this activation function works? Just see this graph over here. So 
if your value is less than 0 these are the values which are less than 0 if the value of x is less than 0 then output would be 0 what that means is if you will get any negative value right so it will convert all the negative values to 0 and if the value of x is greater than 0 then output would be the value of x right you can see over here when the output of uh, when the value of x is minus 3 value of x is minus 3 what will happen the output of x is minus 3 that means it is smaller than 0 that means the output over here will be 0 why 0 because this is a negative number and ReLU converts all the negative numbers to 0 right again minus 5 so we are using ReLU activation function it will make the output as 0 but now plus 3 as x over here we have then if the value of x is greater than 0 then output would be equal to input that means if input is 3 output would be 3 if input is 5 output would be 5 okay this is how ReLU activation function work now what is uh, why uh, this uh, why it is converting all the negative values to 0 why what do you think why it convert all the negative values to 0 because what we want is using ReLU activation function we can you know uh, we can solve the problem of vanishing gradients vanishing gradient means when a value become very small very smaller and smaller layer by layer and if you remove all the negative values what will happen you will get uh, you know uh, you will solve a problem of vanishing gradient if you are uh, you know removing all the negative values with zero what will happen you will get you will not get very small values right and you will not face a problem of vanishing gradients again vanishing gradients i'll teach you in next class today just remember this thing that ReLU activation function will convert all the negative values to zero and all the positive values will uh, the output would be equal to input this is what ReLU activation function does now the next activation function is softmax now when we use softmax activation function this activation function is again very important whenever you want to create any classifiers image classifiers right so we use this activation function so let's suppose you have five different classes right uh, cat dog elephant monkey and horse so you have an image you want to build a classifier which can tell us which can classify whether the image is of cat dog horse or elephant or monkey right so we have five different classes over here Mul we have multiple classes so when you have multiple classes and you want to perform this classification task what this softmax function does this will tell you this will calculate the probability of each class okay it will this softmax activation function will give you a probability of each class and finally the class which will have the highest probability that will become the output so see this picture over here so class a class b class c and class d right so suppose class a is monkey class b is horse class c is cat and class d is uh, elephant so we have four classes over here so suppose over here we have one image so for every image these are the different probability values we will see the higher probability value so in second case you will see this is the higher probability value that means the image which would be over here that image belongs to this particular class because the probability of this class is more as compared to other class so this is how this softmax activation function work what it does is it simply calculate the probability for each class and will finally see which class is having the um, highest probability value and the class with the highest probability value will become the output so this is what softmax activation function is so guys this is all about the activation functions right i hope you get a uh, idea about these activation functions uh, don't worry we will uh, you know perform practical of all these activation functions so that you will understand these things in a proper way 
but for today just remember this thing like what kind of activation function will give you which kind of output that's it okay thank you